Welcome to Crafty Concepts with Erin and the Creative Design Team's Perfect Pandemic Presence video collaboration. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me. Today I have a really fun project for you. On my desk is the Serenity Paper Collection. You guys, this paper pack is gorgeous. I've already cut into it, so some of the pieces are, you know, missing half of them, but you can see all the gorgeous patterns. I mean, look at this ombre blue tones with the gold flecks, and I just love it mixed with that craft color. So pretty. I have these cute little mint tin boxes that I ordered off of Amazon that we're going to be using for our project. You can certainly use a recycled tin as well. You'll need some little pencils. These are mechanical pencils. Again, I ordered from Amazon. You can get regular pencils or mechanical, but they do need to be small enough to fit in the tin. So let's jump over to the Cricut Design Space, and we're going to start by clicking on the Shapes button. I'm selecting the square, unlock it, and then we're going to change this to 3.56 by 2.2. I'm going to go ahead and relock it, duplicate this shape and just for fun we'll change the color it doesn't really matter um, but I think blue looks nice let's go with blue so now I've clicked the text and I'm gonna go ahead and type in my little poem I'll share that with you in just a second so through trial and error you know if you've ever tried to draw from the Cricut design space you may have run into this it only reads the outline outside lines of the text so you'll get a bubble effect Choosing a font that is labeled as a writing font helps, but still, if it's too large of a font, you'll see that bubble effect. So this one worked out for me. I went ahead and after a lot of experimenting with different fonts, I have found that the You Are Here from the Close to My Heart Cricut cartridge worked really well. So I'm just getting that centered right over my block. I found that by adjusting the both the line space as well as the letter space, it made it um, more legible and easy to read. I will have all the details listed down below um, in the description box, so if you missed anything, be sure to check there for more information. So right now my Cricut thinks that this is just to be cut out. So we want to, before we attach it, go ahead and I click attach, unattach it. Go to the line type and select draw, and then you can reattach these, and that tells the Cricut to draw and then cut around the shape. So now we're gonna click on images. I'm searching my cartridges, and I'm already in the art booking uh, cartridge, so I've selected rectangle, and this one looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that size to 3.2 by 2.1. And then I'm going to duplicate that for a total of 15 rectangles. I found that that is the maximum amount you can fit on one page when you're cutting them out. So here you only see 12, but I did go back in and add some more. So before we peel these off of our Cricut mat, I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and do my stamping. So from this Mary Border stamp set, you can see all of the different uh, fauna images here, the little sprigs. I have sapphire ink and I'm using this one and this one. I already have them mounted on a block. I'm going to go around the edge. Now these are intended to go inside of our little boxes for the recipient to write on. So we don't wanna fill it all up with stamping. We just wanna add a little detail around the outside edge of the rectangle. So just have fun with this part and you can just move your stamps around and I've got them just about done there. And then use your scraper, you can peel these up. I have found that, um, don't use a brand new mat for this because they'll curl and be kind of messy. Um, this one has lost a lot of its tack and that makes it perfect for this. So I'll peel one up for you just to show you and then we'll I'll do the rest off of camera. So for our little poem, I'm using a Cricut pen. This is 0.4. Put the cap on the back so you don't lose it. And then in housing A, push that down, close it up, and then you can load your paper and press go. It's going to go ahead and do the writing for you. And it turned out perfectly. So now we have all our pieces. You can see the tin has rounded edges. So I'm using my corner rounder to go ahead and cut these. Now I tried to find the perfectly sized rectangle 
um, with the exact angle corners and it was just taking too long. So I discovered that my corner rounder was perfect. It matched perfectly. So I thought, well, why not just do that? So I'm doing this piece from the Serenity Collection and this is gonna go on our front cover and our little poem's gonna go inside. Now these, I did use a rectangle because we don't want it to fit exactly. If it did fit snugly, you wouldn't be able to get the pieces of paper out. Our poem says, when your head starts to worry and your mind just can't rest, put your prayer stone on paper and let God do the rest. This little piece, prayer box, I did type out on my computer and printed that out. And now I'm gonna use the fancy borders to create this little edge piece for the bottom. That could be one piece, but I wasn't sure what I was doing, so I just had a scrap, and it works fine. Now, from the uh, Serenity Paper Collection, I have this zip strip, or the branding strip, and I'm going to hide that uh, cut in the two pieces of vanilla cardstock, uh, which you'll see in just a moment. I'm using liquid glue, and I want to use a generous amount because, you know, we want to make sure none of our edges are lifting or anything like that. We're gonna apply the glue all over the outside edge of this piece and then line this up, just making sure it's straight here. And again, we're gonna use that coordinating zip strip to hide that cut in the paper there. With everything going on out in the world right now, I just thought prayer boxes would be a really nice thoughtful gift to give to people. So along with prayer boxes, I'm going to show you some gratitude boxes and even some kind of like bucket list inspired boxes, just some different ideas that would best fit the recipient. Using my micro tip scissors, I'm just going to trim that off flush and then we're ready to adhere this to our box. Make sure you're opening it the right way. And then I am going to use liquid glass. This is a very strong adhesive. And again, I'm gonna apply a generous amount. I put down a piece of printer paper to protect my work surface because I'm gonna take my finger and literally smear this out to the edges because I want solid contact so there's no lifting anywhere at all um, from the piece of pattern paper and the lid. Hey, we're crafters. We don't mind getting our hands dirty, right? <laughs> So go ahead and I did cut this so it has just the slightest bit of margin around the edge of the box. I just thought that looked nice and finished everything off well. Smooth it all out. And now looking at my sticker sheet, I see this really pretty flower and I think it looks nice. I do go back in afterwards and also seal this down with liquid glass. So now we're ready to decorate the inside portion of the lid. Go ahead and get your little poem and just to keep that consistency with the outside, I'm using the same zip strip and we're just going to glue this underneath our poem across the bottom here. And it's a very simple design, but it looks really nice. Again, cut that flush with your micro tip scissors. And then I'm going to use liquid glass again and go ahead and apply to the back. Now, I don't have to be as careful because being tucked up on the inside of this lid, is this piece is protected. So you do want to use enough to make sure it is going to stay put. And then there's these two little flowers from the sticker sheet that I'm going to kind of set off to the right and overlapping just a bit. So just situating my stickers and then we're ready to bring in our little note cards that again are intended for the recipient to write on. So you can see we have all of our stamping and then go ahead and put your little pencil inside. This little box is ready to gift to a coworker, teacher, neighbor, friend, just about anyone. You can see that I added a little ribbon around the outside edge there. And when you open this up, you just see the encouraging words and our pretty stamping, and it's just kind of an, a pretty little box. I don't know. I love little things like this. They just make me happy. You can also create gratitude boxes. Begin each day with a thankful heart. This is from With a Thankful Heart stamp set that is available in the online only section of my online store. And when you open this box up, it says, this gratitude box can change your life. Every day, write down something that you are thankful for. It can even be the little things often taken for granted. Being grateful makes us better, kinder, and happier. 
I've decorated the inside with our Bloom with Grace card making stamp. You can see the little flowers and the arrows there. Again, this is available in the online only section. So that is a version of a gratitude box. Here's another prayer box I made and I love the acrylic hearts. Can you see the shininess when I tilt it in the light? I basically just took those, I backed them with raspberry cardstock and then filled them up with liquid glass and they make a really neat embellishment. To carry that heart theme inside, I used another My Acrylics heart and colored that in with the marker. And then the stamping there, you see the two little hearts on the flamingo cardstock there. The pattern paper you can see I put around the edge and that's decorating the front is from the Jingle Joy collection. The two little hearts are from the Florals and Flutter stamp set from the annual catalog that I stamped here in the corner. You can also make a bucket list box. This one here says, dream it, do it. And I just thought this was really fun. The pattern papers from the current mix-in collections. And when you open this up, I love the little pennant banner alphabet that you see across the top there. This is definitely an alpha stamp I'm gonna use a lot. You get the alphas and then inside is the thin cuts that come along with this. And you can see you have four different banner options. You can mix and match and it's just so cute. The background, a little grid stamp, you can see I stamped over the cardstock and then stamped my letters. And then we went ahead and stamped dream big and make it happen. These are from the very awesome Make It Happen stamp set that will be made available to you very soon, so stay tuned for that. Check the description box below for the Perfect Pandemic Presence playlist, and be sure to tune in tomorrow for Lisa Stens to see what she has created for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.